Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to St. Julie's in this celebration of the Sunday of the Resurrection of the Lord. Our opening hymn is hymn number 183 in your Breaking Bread hymnal, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Once again, that's hymn number 183 in the Breaking Bread hymnal. Please join in singing. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Very good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Our church is almost empty today, and yet we know our prayer is united with the church throughout the world in praise and thanksgiving for the gift of new life represented by Jesus' resurrection from the dead, a life that even now is being poured into us. So as we gather in God's name today, grateful for the gift of his love, his life, we ask forgiveness of sin and that our path forward in life may be one that is illuminated by his own light and love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Jesus. 
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins throughout his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day, this is the day, that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. 
vida Give thanks to the Lord for He is good His love endures forever Let the house of Israel sing His love endures forever This is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand won victory, His right hand raised me, I shall not die but live and recover. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Death and life contended in dreadful strife. Death did not hold him immortal his life. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is our risen, the victor, the king. Mary confessing what you have seen Christ whom lies empty where once he has been angels bright confirming shroud laid aside he goes to Galilee he lives though he died Christians sing his glory with every breath. Sing of his kingdom, victorious or death. Jesus 
most grant us mercy, new life from heaven, Christ ever reigns, alleluia, amen, alleluia, his triumph we see, Christ is our reason, the victor, the you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you lord on the first day of the week mary of magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb so she ran and went to simon peter and to the other disciple whom jesus loved and told them they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During his years in Spain, Ernest Hemingway published a short story in the 1930s called The Capital of the World. And in the story is a young man who's estranged from his father. He leaves the small village in which they live and goes to Madrid 
with the hopes of becoming a matador to seek fame and fortune. And the father longs for his son. And so he sets out and searches the city without being able to find his son. So he publishes in the paper there a little personal ad saying, Paco, meet you at the Hotel Montana on Tuesday at noon. All is forgiven. And so the father goes to the hotel on Tuesday at noon, and when he arrives there, finds 800 young men with the name Paco. What a powerful story of the world longing for forgiveness and reunification of reconciliation. And what a beautiful story symbolizing this time of the year for us. It was as if God the Father called all his children to the Mount of Calvary on Good Friday with the message, all is forgiven. And here we are now on Easter morning. We just heard the account from John's gospel, and it's one that on one hand is glorious. The Lord is no longer dead. He's risen from the dead. And yet we see that the disciples do not yet understand the impact of what Jesus had been preaching for so long. Significantly, the gospel writer says, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb while it is still dark. It's as if the whole world is still in the dark. She finds the tomb empty and is troubled by the fact that Jesus' body isn't there. So she goes to those that Jesus loves, the apostles, bringing that news. And we find Peter and John run to the tomb also, finding nothing there but the linens that had wrapped his body. And so they return to where they had come from. And the scripture ends the passage with the words, they did not yet understand. And it's almost as if they were self-quarantined then for some days because we know that the Lord eventually comes to them locked in the darkness of the upper room. And only then do they begin to understand what this message is about. I was remembering several years ago, I spent five weeks at Thomas Merton's monastery in Gethsemane, Kentucky. And it was just as if I put myself in self-quarantine for those weeks. And I have to say the first week was very painful. It was so quiet. All the activity of life that I was used to suddenly came to a halt. And really, for the first time in many years, I was forced to face the reality of God before me. And more importantly, what my life had to do in the context of God's plan for me. So there were days of deep searching, of pain, uh, looking into my own life and how I had failed what God's plan was for me. But through those painful and then joyful days came this rediscovery of God's love, of his desire that I reflect the love of Jesus, his son, so that when I left that place, that would be my message to the world. You know, we're not unlike those disciples on Easter morning you know, still fearful of what had happened to the master, confused, perhaps, not understanding the impact of Jesus' resurrection for their world, but for the whole world, and grappling to understand what that meaning was came more and more that revelation of Jesus risen from the dead, indeed, in our midst. I've heard from so many parishioners and friends during uh, these weeks of quarantine where we ourselves are 
pretty much confined to our homes, that there's been a rediscovery of relationship with God, of God's plan for me. And if we let these weeks go by without seeking that deep inner transformation that the Lord desires, and somehow we not only fail God, but we fail ourselves as well. So we pray for that transformation that is the gift of new life in the resurrection. That if we find that we have been holding back in our love to family members, to those who are deserving of my love and attention. Perhaps that is a transformation that needs to take about. If I lack in my willingness to forgive, perhaps these days the Lord is calling me to be transformed, to forgive, to love as he has loved us, to truly seek to change my life through the gift of God's Spirit, that I be that living witness of the resurrection. We had that very beautiful image that St. Paul offered us in the second reading today, reminding us that we are leaven, we are yeast in the bread of our culture, a yeast that is not wickedness and evil, he says, but one of sincerity and truth. So it is that truth that is Jesus Christ, uh, that we bring to the world in which we live. And as faithful as we are in our desire, as zealous as we become, so too does the Lord become visible uh, in the darkness of our world. So as he is the light of the world, overcoming the darkness of sin and death, overcoming the darkness of the tomb, he invites and welcomes us to walk in that same light, that we may, may be a sign of contradiction to the world in which we live, but that we might bear that light of Christ in all we do. You know, this past week I was thinking it's been several weeks since we've had Mass here, and we always hear the words from the deacon at the end of Mass, go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. So we might want to ask ourselves, until we meet again here in this place of worship as a community of faith, how have I served the Lord in serving my brother and sister? How have I been that witness of God's love in a world that too often is fear filled with hatred, but now with anxiety and fear and that dis-ease of, of peace where uh, we're wanting and looking for that. So we are the living body of Christ, bearers of the gift of his love and light to the world. My dear sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? The Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. On this most sacred of days, let us pray that the resurrection of Christ will touch, heal, and strengthen all who are in need. That the church of God, gathered in Easter joy this day, will be renewed through the saving death and resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear us. that all in positions of authority be the yeast that transforms society and heals our fragile earth. We pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, caregivers, and family members who care for the sick with gentleness and compassion. May they find strength in their works of mercy during this time. We pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. That those who search for meaning and purpose in their lives will find in the death and resurrection of Christ the answers to their questions. We pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. For all among us who are suffering, especially the poor, the sick, and the dying, and for all who have died, may they rejoice in the reward of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. And for those intentions that you hold in the silence of your heart, We pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, for those who have asked for our prayer, for those who have no one to remember them today, we pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear O God of life and love, you have redeemed us through the sacrifice of your Son. Your generosity with life and love is without bound. Hear the prayers we offer and grant them in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join in the singing of hymn number 164 in your Breaking Bread hymnal, Alleluia, Love is Alive. Once again, that's hymn number 164 in the Breaking Bread hymnal. Promise for 
Pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We will accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks father most holy through your beloved son jesus christ your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our savior and redeemer incarnate by the holy spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate, the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, St. Julie Billiard, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. United with the Church throughout the world on this most holy of days, we join our hearts and voices and pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who after your own resurrection from the dead, said to your apostles, as you say to us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing hymn number 575. Worthy is the Lamb, hymn 575. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. 
Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Usually at the end of Mass, at Christmas and Easter, I like to thank all our parish ministers who make our liturgy so beautiful throughout the year. So even in their absence today, I would like to thank all those who donate their time so generously to us uh, and give to us really the most beautiful of liturgies, our lectors and Eucharistic ministers, our ushers and greeters, our altar servers, our altar society, our environment uh, committee, our wonderful music ministry, our deacons, our office staff, uh, so many who work in so many ways to, to uh, be a gift to us. And also to all our special ministers who are at home, who are used to be uh, just doing a lot of things in God's name, taking communion to the sick, teaching the young of the parish, uh, uh, gathering together for Bible studies and prayer and so on. I uh, would like to thank all of you very much. This past week, we have attempted to call all our registered parishioners. Now, we're finding out many landlines have been disconnected, so if we missed you, we apologize, but it was our hope to be able to reach out to each of you uh, by Easter and to see how you're doing. If you or anyone you know has any special needs that we can address in any way, please contact us. There's someone in the office uh, every day and will continue to be. And we pray again that this time be a time of grace, that God give us new insights through the gift of his spirit to see in ways that we haven't seen before, to see things that we haven't uh, seen in our brothers and sisters, to give us more generous hearts, more forgiving hearts, more loving hearts, but to truly let ourselves and all of creation be transformed by Jesus, who himself is the remedy to all illness in the world, and especially uh, the illness of sin and death. So a very happy, holy Easter to all of you near and far. One of the wonderful things about uh, posting Mass on the internet is hearing from people literally all over the world that that join us this day. So if you're not a parishioner, if you're ever in Newbury Park, you are most welcome. And you, you can't see it now, but I understand we'll, we'll also show you um, Daryl, our youth minister, in a very short time, and Kristen, our religious ed coordinator, invited parishioners just in the last couple days to send in photographs. So we have our pews covered with your beautiful, smiling faces here. So hopefully we can uh, show some of those faces to you uh, as well. So God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing and peace of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you all today and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, Alleluia. Him 168, Christ the Lord is risen today.